you guys know that after spending a whole bunch of time and money trying to come up with a configuration of the PTR-91 that I really liked, uh, I didn't, and I got rid of it. Whereas, I spent a whole lot of time trying to come up with a configuration for this 9CT that I like, and I've got it. Uh, it's not what I set out to do originally, which was see if I could uh, get this thing set up for use as like a modern night vision gun. Kind of a fool's errand, obviously, but it was still a fun experiment. As for an actually usable gun, uh, as far as PCCs go, I'd say this is configured fairly well, and of course because it is roller delayed, it shoots very well. Is this practical? No, far from it, but it is at least somewhat sensible. So what we've got is uh, a Holosun HS510C on the top, traded out the EOTech XPS3. They both sit at the same height, they both have that similar wide field of view and circled out reticle. Um, the reason that the big reticle and the wide window is useful on this gun is because you've got a god-awful cheek weld. So properly indexing on uh, the brace every single time, not always guaranteed, particularly if you shoot a bunch of different random guns. So having a, a big window and a big circle dot really helps draw the eye in case you end up with a little bit of a chin or neck weld, which happens to me all the time. The other thing that we have done is uh, got a always on, well, at least, you know, auto off shake awake feature on the HS510C. EOTech, um, obviously you have to turn it on manually and then it turns off after four or eight hours. Um, if I was going to use this as like a vehicle gun, I would want to be able to grab it and not have to think about turning it on with the uh, push buttons. So a little more practical in that sense. Is this as good for night vision? No, it still can be used for night vision because again, we've got a significant amount of uh, drop in the brace and uh, the light transmission is decent on a 510C. The brightness settings leave something to be desired. If you want to do night vision on this dot, it helps to turn off the circle reticle actually because then it just dims the whole thing down. As far as the front end goes, you know that I started with a Midwest Industries handguard, went back to the factory M-Lock and now I'm back to the Midwest Industries. This has got a Strike Industries link curved uh, angled hand stoppy thing here. Um, I've tried several different uh, hand stops and like, you know, indexing accessories, whatever you want to call them. And uh, this one just happens to work perfectly with this positioning and length of rail to allow you to either hold it normally like a normal person might or C-clamp as is the preferred method of the zoomers these days. So the C-clamp is actually pretty nice for this because you can mount, uh, because this does have almost seven sides of M-lock, you can mount the tape switch kind of at an angle and then when you C-clamp it, you end up with your fingers in a nice place to activate the light. Now, obviously we could move this tape switch up one slot and then you could hold it normally and your fingers would still be in the same place if that's the sort of grip that works for you. I don't mind C-clamping this thing because again, with our weird brace and our suboptimal uh, recoil control from that kind of an angle, you need all the help you can get up there. The light is an Arisaka 300 with a Malkoff E1H, no sorry, E1 Scout, uh, which I wouldn't recommend. Even on a really short range gun, this is all flood and no throw. Um, a hyper throw or even just a regular Surefire Scout light is probably better. Tail cap is a DS00 because the UE07 tail cap just uh, flickers and changes brightness all the time, kind of at random. And this is a UE, I think this is the UE07 tail switch. This is a Magpul Surefire tape switch M-lock mount. Rail covers, BCM. Um, I accidentally, without looking one night, my vision was blurred by some substance. Uh, accidentally ordered some knockoff BCM rail panels off of eBay and they're crappy. They're like hard slick plastic. BCM ones are actually textured and rubber and quite nice. So that's the configuration of this thing as it is right this second. Uh, the only things that I'm not super wild about honestly actually is the Magpul grip module. Greatly improved uh, feel, ergonomics and contour beaver tail, beaver tail wise grip uh, texture and grip angle way better and safety selector access much better. However, the safety selector on these Magpul modules is really, really loose. Um, there's almost no solid detent. So that's not super awesome. Maybe not worth the added ergonomics and the uh, ambidextrous controls. I don't know, hard to say. Haven't decided to switch back yet. Um, also, the fitment of the Magpul grip module to the body of the gun is pretty bad. So a lot of the times when you go to pull it into your 
shoulder or your uh, your bicep rather, um, you'll just feel it kind of pop out of position and into a different position. So that's not great. Other than that, this thing is pretty nice. Um, I quite like it. Now all you got to do is uh, try to get a, a tri lug can, which will probably take me like a whole year. So. I'd say stay tuned, but uh, don't stay tuned. You're never going to see this thing again until I get a can, so take it easy.